Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel and a very exciting day, thus beginning the next exciting week, I suspect, as we got CPI today, FOMC tomorrow, and then I believe a quadruple witching on Friday as well. So this week, very likely to be fraught with peril and a lot of things to discuss as far as some major numbers today to be aware of and leading into the rest of this week. Anyways, other than that, I want to once again let you know over here on the Crown Chain application or just in the description below on YouTube, you can find a link that can get you the Jewel Light for free for the first 30 days, plus there is also an affiliate link for the Apex Decentralized Exchange, which may or may not be of value to you as the SEC is shutting down all the damn exchanges or at least suing them. Uh, and that is going to award you 5% off of your trading fees for the lifetime of your account. All right, sweet. That's enough shilling for today. Let's just jump right into it. Starting off right in over here with Dixie as today's CPI day. So this one likely going to take a bit of a move. And in this case, we were looking at hidden bearish divergence come off of last week's closure. It was actually not necessarily confirmed. However, the way that it is leading into this week, yes, it is still potential here and very, 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 very likely to be confirmed. In fact, I'd say anywhere below two weeks goes low, which is about 103.30 or so. And yes, that is a kind of foregone conclusion, very likely to come back down at least to about 102, maybe even all the way back down to about 101 and uh, and, and like 30 cents or so. Uh, but ultimately, that would generally be speaking uh, good for risk on assets, namely the traditional markets, as we do see uh, NASDAQ and SPY continue to make new highs in the year, Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrencies. A little bit less so, obviously, uh, but you know that could be a bit of a uh, you know you know a bit of a competing factor right there to be aware of. So in this case, yes, still looking for short-term downside on this one, uh, coming off the five-day and the weekly, as we do see this one uh, very likely in motion of that next move, likely correcting to the downside and then come back to it after that. Anyways, uh, yes, we've gone through that. We've gone through that. Um, let's now go into some regular CME Bitcoin charts over here, of which what do we see? on the lower term time frames, we, I do want to be aware that there is a nice little gap Ola, coming in right around about 26,450 to 26,500 ish or so short term coming into the CPI number release. You're going to see a lot of volatility. You're going to see Wix, you know, probably both ways. And this would be an area of hot contention as well uh, to the upside. So if you do see a quick wick up there, you know, for short term rejection, uh, probably an area of interest. However, just to put it very, very bluntly here, as long as Bitcoin is below basically about 27,300 or so, let's say, on even a four hour closing basis, you know, all all rallies are lower highs um, with areas of interest, like I said, at around 26.5 or, or 26.450. And then yet again, um, just below 27,000 uh, bucks. Those would be my two. Uh, those would be my two areas to be uh, mindful of until then short term probably does try a bit of a rally. I mean, that's literally what we're getting right now, actually. Uh, not we, but, you know, Bitcoin is getting right now. Um, but uh, but going into it later today, you know, this is all going to be second to the CPI prints coming out as uh, those are going to show likely the real direction until tomorrow's FOMC. Um, but uh, but yeah, anyways, also of note on the two day time frame, you know, still have to be cautious here because the two day time frame jewel on CME is in very, 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 very close collision of getting a pretty major downside signal right here. It would be considered a rejection of that slower moving oscillator. DMI is already red, so it is supporting that that direction. Just need to see this one close down. I would say anywhere below 26,000 bucks probably does it coming in tomorrow night. Obviously, you know, today's price action is going to massively um, uh, influence that, of course. Anyways, uh, now moving on into the areas of interest, I suppose, for the more short term, uh, based off the HPDR um, indicator over here, we can see short term range lows coming in around 25,500, basically the lows you know of this week and, and last week thus far. And uh, in range highs, uh, around that CME gap region, 26,450. That is to say that if Bitcoin can actually reclaim that 26,450-ish region, I would be looking for it to put in a greater rally close to, you know, at least 27,000 bucks most likely, but still, um, you know, long term, I do have my reservations uh, as long as Bitcoin's specifically below about 20, 27,300. Um, above there, that's when the boo laws start to look, you know, it's, it's not that they start to look like super strong yet. It's just, it, it would start to look like, okay, we got more sideways and boo laws start the probability such shift in the boo laws favor but until then you know short-term rallies that fail to reclaim that region are well just that um, with again the bottom side of this range coming in about 25 500 so below 25 500 
that would be where I'd expect the next sort of catalytic uh, event for you know significant downside to occur. I think that move that uh, you know a lot of people are waiting for, um, of which you know I, I'd be looking for Bitcoin really to take you know a, a pretty decent leg to the downside after that, uh, it, it, at least below twenty five thousand bucks, honestly, uh, somewhere between twenty four five to twenty four eight hundred, maybe a try for a bounce there and then come back to it after that with potential for more. Um, again, if that condition were to be met. Um, so sweet, we got that one, we got that one. Uh, let's move now into stochastic momentum, see where the pivots currently are, see if there's anything of specific interest. And we can see on the daily, um, stochastic momentum remains to the downside as long as Bitcoin is below 26,700, which is actually decently above that, uh, you know, that that short-term gap. 12-hour time frame also can be showing downside pressure as long as Bitcoin is below 26,450, right on the gap. Six-hour time frame is also be showing downside, uh, although it should cross the upside here on the next period, um, as long as Bitcoin's below about 26, uh, right now a little bit above to be fair, um, but not really a super strong read here either which way, just to you know, just put it bluntly. Four hour time frame is also gonna be showing uh, upside pressure as well, as long as Bitcoin's above 25,950, so kind of the same as six hour right there. We do see a bit of a trend line regression coming in from these last few lows. Uh, that would be the 30, or yeah, the last day of uh, May versus uh, last week, the 6th of June and perhaps even this one over here as well. All of them, well, okay-ish bounces, let's say. And then uh, and then moving down to the hourly time frame, we can see that hourly is actually vertical as long as Bitcoin's above 25,950. So we do see the six, four, and, and, and hourly, kind of all of the medium and lower term time frames uh, pointed to the north side, basically as long as Bitcoin's above 26. So that is why I do see that short term. We probably do see this rally extend a little bit. The question is, you know, what happens at one of those major regions? Again, 26, three, sorry, 26,450 to 265. Uh, and then you got just below 27,000 bucks if things get really, really crazy around that CPI prints coming out later today. So uh, those would be the areas that I really want to be aware of. And, and then, of course, yes, uh, we still have this chart over here relevant. Um, let me just make sure where is, okay, oops, we don't need this pain. Damn it, get the fuck out of there. Um, sorry, just uh, reprimanding my, my browser. Uh, my browser. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, the two-day volatility versus stochastic momentum chart uh, is still, it, it's, it's actually on the verge of being completed today, it does look like. Uh, last closure that we did get did not signal official expansion as far as I'm concerned because it did not close above the critical zone or like emphatically above that critical zone. Uh, this one will, um, as it currently is around 14 percentile, uh, expanding from extreme lows in this case. That is also going to be very, 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 very interesting to see what happens with the two-day time frame so cast momentum pivot because if we do see official expansion on this one, uh, which well, well, which will probably happen later tonight, you know, as far as as far as that's concerned. Again, it's a long day left to go. So, I mean, if Bitcoin like really, you know, pops back into the prior range, I, I guess maybe that doesn't happen. So <laughs> go back to the fucking drawing board yet again. Uh, but in this case, 26,350 going to be the magical number right here to remain above. So that is actually a little bit below that current CME gap. Again, it's a very, very long day left to go. Uh, but hey, you know, if I want some uh, some hopium on the other side, that would be it. That would be the pivot that I'm looking for. Bitcoin must close today above 26,350 or so, um, and then uh, and then yeah, you know, that would at least at least buy a bit more time. But still, as far as I'm concerned, for the bull loss right now, uh, as long as Bitcoin's below 27,3 or even 27 for that matter, um, you know that short-term rally can very easily uh, turn into, you know, another lower high and, and continuation to the downside. But, uh, but yes, that would be kind of the hope for right now to be mindful of. Um, it's a signal has been taking absolute fucking forever to, to, to play out. Um, but I do think that this is likely to be the start, the catalytic event, uh, then coming into tomorrow with the FOMC. And then of course, the quadruple root, rooting, the rooting, <laughs> the witching on Friday as well. Um, likely to really get this one going. I suspect that this, I, I mean, <laughs> if this isn't it, man, I fucking quit. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I do understand these things can be frustrating, but of course, you know, patience, uh, does pay off and um and this this particular one has just been so uh, uncharacteristic of the past actually um or, you know there's really been only a couple other times that we've seen some you know this low for this long and um 
Well, the last one was to the upside, to be fair, uh, actually even crossing up from a uh, similar region as this, in fact. Um, so perhaps that is, uh, you know, of value as well. Anyways, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this one. Again, big numbers to the downside, 25,500 for, um, for continuation, big numbers to the upside. You got your CME gap, 26,450 or, or 26,500 or so. Then you got that 27,000-ish region. Boo laws take full control. I wouldn't say full control, but it starts to really, really look for good for Bitcoin back above 27,300 if that were to happen until that happens however be mindful of short-term rallies uh, getting rejected especially around these economic events there is expected to be a lot of volatility around these ones and a lot of wiki price actions so i expect that we'll have more clarity on the situation tomorrow and throughout the rest of this week it's going to be pretty damn fun i'll leave you right there and with that said as always take care much love and see you hopefully tomorrow